Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, motivational, the pinnacle, wife. Mr. Maker, what's going on, man? You pay too much. <laughs> Well, going, you know, Madel, I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, you name it. If you can type Boss Talk Podcast anywhere, just Google us. Just go ahead and do it. You see all the different platforms pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, you definitely have to go to our YouTube channel. And there we would so appreciate you going to, going to go ahead and sign up for our membership. Because that's where you get exclusive content that you can't find anywhere else. Thank you for your support, and we love you. All right. Hey, man, it's time. What's I going? can promise you this will be one for the books. This guy right here is from close to Tennessee? Portland, Tennessee. Close to, ten, to Nashville, though. Oh, yeah. yeah close, close to, to Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, you can say it like Up that there by Young Buck. Young Buck from uh, Nashville. Yeah. Uh, they call it Cashville. Yep. Marcotic is in the building, y'all. Stop playing. Stand up. This guy right here, man, I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, uh, love rap. Love music, right? Yeah, What sure. made you... Is it is it country rap? Uh, you know, people put a different name on it, really. But, yeah, you could call it country rap. But I like to think I make, you know, like all kinds of music. So yeah. I, I make rap music, and then I might have a song that's that's a rock song or a country rap song. So I kind of make, like, on one CD, you'll have different genres of music, but it's still all, like, cadence rap. You know what I mean? So wow. Now, we up here in Chicago, uh, uh, downtown Chicago. You you never would have thought that you would have called an old boy out of Texas and an old boy out of Portland. And put us in Chicago. Cashville, Portland, Tennessee. And we in Chicago. We done made it to the big city. With the big buildings. Uh, we, we here. Stand up. You know what I'm saying? Texas <laughs> got a lot of big buildings. Oh, not where I'm from. You just met me in the city. If you'd have met me where I'm from, I don't even know if you'd have stayed. I did take you down there. Though. I was about to say, and I still <laughs> stayed. <laughs> but anyway, tell me, um, what was it like growing up? In a country field. It wasn't always a country field, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, I grew up in, like, it's a smaller town. I right. grew up in a trailer. So that's how, you know, the music and the brand for Mobile Home Rich became a thing. And that's how people started liking it. And, you know, the fan base built behind that saying. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people around there, you know, grew up that way. So mm -hmm. there's a lot. Like, there's trailer parks, trailers just surrounded all over. I think the city that I, I, I grew up in... Um, they have a lot of trailer homes. Yeah, there's like 10 trailer parks Wait in, a minute. in one city. Like let 10 me, of them. Let me stop you right there. Most of the time, when there's a lot of trailers, yeah. there's some meth around. Oh, yeah, for I'm sure. I'm talking about meth. Yeah. Wait a minute. Missing teeth. <clears throat> all kinds of stuff going on. Swollen faces. It's oh, horribly... Yeah addictive drug in these neighborhoods. But why does that um, have to go with trailer parks? It's the impoverished areas, right? Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it is, you know, it's a trailer, trailer park, but at the end of the day, it's like it's a poverty area. Like, it's a lower class community. That's right. So, it's really like any lower class community really has that problem right now with like fentanyl and fentanyl stuff. Fentanyl too. The, the, it's crazy you say that because uh, I just put out a song that's like a story song about that. Wow. It's about it's about uh you know like meth killing the community and stuff like it's like a positive message and it's a story it's like a you know a real event story of stuff that happens that like leads from that. That's Did you real. know anybody who actually passed away from stuff like that? Yeah, I've known a, a lot of people. There's a uh, you know there's a lot of people seen a lot of people that that's happened have fan, have had a uh, family do it. You know, family pass away from stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So. It's uh, it's everywhere right now, not just where I'm at, but like all it's over all the country. Over. Yeah. Man, but have so. you seen people beat it though? I always like to go both um, spectrum of the yeah. discussion. Yeah, I like people, because people talk about the addiction and how hard it is to beat it. Have you seen people actually overcome and beat it and clean for years now? Yeah, I've seen a few people do that. Um, I wish I've seen more mm -hmm. people do it, but yeah, I've seen a few people do so it. So it is possible. Yeah, people do it. 
I mean, there's a lot of people you see that, you know, especially like for me, people that I was younger that like went down that path. You'll see some that like now, some of them aren't alive no more. Some of them are like, you know, living good now and like did better and finally got it right. Mm. Man. Like, so. And you were raised with your mom and dad? Yeah, I was. I had one uh, like split home, but yeah. Okay. Did, so. So both of that, you spend time with both. And do your dad lived in a trailer park as well? Uh, it was a trailer. It wasn't in a park. It, it wasn't was a park. A, it was in it was a trailer. A, yeah. So your dad lived in a trailer and your mom lived in a trailer. No, we we kind of moved around. Like my, oh, your mom moved younger, around. Yeah, my mom, she moved around, kind of different places. But uh, from where to where? Tell me some of the cities. Just like you... around, like around, like in the same city. Yeah, same area of the city. Like uh, it's kind of on the line, like Franklin, Kentucky, Portland, Tennessee, like around that area. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so it was kind of close to that. But so your mom, your dad, you split households, and um, you were with your siblings. No, I didn't have no siblings. Your only child, only, only kid. Yeah, really. Yeah. But you had to be with your mom mainly, because most most kids always go with mom and not with dad. Uh, I was back and forth. Really, really? it's like a back and back and forth thing. So, so you never said, "Well, I just want to live with my dad," or "I want to live with my mom." Nah, I just kind of was back and forth. Like okay, different, diff- different amounts of time. You know what I mean? So, and I always feel like they do. Okay, you said you're older now. Can you look back and feel like? living in separate households with your parents do you feel like that affected your life and your upbringing any much i don't really think it no nah, i don't i don't really think that because would have had a difference of right. like me where i'm from and like you know i don't think it really really mm. would have made a much of a difference you know what i mean like it would okay it would have personally in my life based on like people mm-hmm. like there's people in my life that wouldn't have been mm-hmm. that wasn't the case but uh because people always yeah. feel like you have more structure when you have both parents in the same household. You have a certain type of upbringing compared to when you don't. Yeah, I guess it depends on your upbringing and, mm-hmm. like, you know, your parents and stuff based on structure and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I could see that to a point. I guess it depends on, you know, your environment. So, so when did you, you know. think or feel like you wanted to branch off into the music? Uh, yeah, so I started doing music when I was, like, like I wanted to do it at like eight years old like from the moment I was a kid mm-hmm. that's what I said I wanted to do who inspired and, you uh, I was just young and I had like my first CDs you know listening to different rappers like I listened to like Eminem and um, a, a lot of different rappers mm-hmm. I listened to like 3-6 Mafia mm-hmm. with DJ Paul Lil White people like that Project Pat I was a big Project Pat fan mm-hmm. and uh yeah, like, and I grew up to get to work with them and stuff, wow. too. So, you know, that... But at eight years old, out, when you were looking up to these people, you never thought yeah, that never, that was even possible. Uh, I never thought I'd meet none of them, but, you know, I just kept doing it, and I spent about, you know, it didn't work at first, but, mm-hmm. you know, like, 10 years into it, I finally found a way to make it happen. I found a brand and found a way to make it a living. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And but for 10 found years, my way in. that's crazy. Yeah, I spent 10 years not really making it nowhere. I wasn't really doing the right things. And, and didn't give up. Yeah. Because I know so many people, even if you, I've had somebody recently on the show, and even when you make it and you become viral and you did good, you know, everybody have the ups and downs in their career. Yeah. Where you do so good and all of a sudden it takes so long for you to get another hit and that, it, that can be depressing. It Mentally, it's hard on you. Yeah, I feel like when you first get everybody's eyes on you, you want to try to do, you want to try to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. and find a way to do it you know um so yeah that's a thing i just always wanted to find a way to be able to you know do it as a living and Mm -hmm. do it like do what i wanted to do as a you know make it a living you know what i mean that's what oh so but how did you um i know you said you did it for 10 years during that 10 years before you actually got your big break how did you not get discouraged and to say you know what screw this i don't see this going anywhere so I really think, so the, like 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 you said, the country rap thing, that wasn't a word that was really spoken when I first started. It wasn't really a thing yet. Uh, now that genre is really big, and the whole like mud park rap thing is is became to be a big thing and became a lot more popular. So ten years ago, it, it wasn't around like well, that. Well, let me stop so. you. Let me stop you. It's a it's a it's a guy out there. Uh, he's a uh, country rap too. Yeah. 
Oh, well, I know they're worse. His huh? name is Toe Down. He's been on my show. Yeah. And he's a white guy. Yeah. And he's he had a song that said, Dirty South is what it's about. Oh, him and uh, Big Hawk. That was the first time I really heard something like that. Now, you How many did years have, ago was that? That was a long time ago. You yeah. wasn't even around. And then there was another one, The Duke, that was kind of country feel. Da ha, da ha, yeah. da ha, 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 ha. It was like John Wayne, right? So this was early signs of there was a chance that country rap could be a thing. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some OGs and originals. That was it, though. No, you're right. It's very slim to none. Yep. So for you to come into that transition, it would be a difficult and a, a thing where we wasn't used to hearing it that way. So, yeah. man, thank you for even getting in there and doing Like, what made you feel, and I might have missed something, cause I, but what made you feel like, man, I got to... I gotta do this. Man, it's just something since I was such a young age I just wanted to do. And it's, uh, you know, I see a lot of artists come and go in it. And it's something like, for me, it's something that I just, I couldn't not do it if I wanted to. Like, I wake up every day and every single day, like all day, I'm focused on it. Like, I wake up and I'm either talking to somebody, I'm recording, I'm, uh, trying to write to something i'm talking to a producer i'm talking to a show promoter you know just another artist anything like that and it's like a, it's an everyday thing you know what i mean yeah and uh it's like an everyday grind and something that i just i really i i just i had a song start to take off and do good and before that i was working construction in nashville okay and uh i was doing fire sprinklers and I wasn't doing music a lot at that time, like I had been in the past, but like at that point I wasn't after it like I am now or nothing. And uh, I wasn't doing it all the time. And, you know, I decided to give it one more go, you know, like one more go to try it one more time. And I did a song that started to do good. And, you know, I came up with the Mobile Home Rich brand and that started to take off. So it just finally worked out for me, you know. And what I was saying about the difference in between then and now you know, back then, when I first started rapping, I was just, you know, doing, like, hip-hop shows. Yeah. And uh, the other stuff wasn't really around like that yet, and I, which I still do rap shows, you know, of course. But it, that environment wasn't there. And then I always had, like, the trailer rap thing going on. But when I started coming out with that Mobile Home Rich brand, it just, I guess the fans kind of gave me that label of wow. country rap. And it's still, you know, it's still rap. Um, like I said, I do different genres of it, but that's really something like the people, a label the people put on me. Wow. But family members, was there is, 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 is ever criti critical moments or criticizing people saying that you act in black or anything like that? Yeah, I've dealt with that. You see like, what I'm like saying? When I was younger, for sure. And like, uh, yeah, yeah, I've definitely went through that. Um, yeah, I went through a point where people told me to go, you know, give up and get a different job, you know, go to college for something else. Like I went to school for a little bit for audio engineering too. And um, I didn't finish, I, I almost did, but I got out and I was recording yeah. in audio engineering. And uh, you know, there's a time where people told me to go do something else that wasn't gonna work or people called me like a, a wannabe rapper or something, you know, like they was on you. They was on you, wasn't it? Oh yeah, they, they, there's a time for that. But like now, it's just like they can't say no more. I finally, I finally did. It, so it <laughs> so blew, when they it see you now, up. what they what they say when they see you now? Mark really Connick in the building. Them, you know? I ain't really ran into them like that. But oh, they I know see you. Like you know, yeah, they know. They'll probably watch this interview. <laughs> they'll probably watch it and they'll be like, I said that. Damn. Like, you, you got to understand, Marcotic. It's, it's, it's not everybody that makes it. And you and I both know that. It's a low percentage. You know what I mean? People want to rap. There are so many different people trying to be an artist. And, you know, for you to feel like you've, you've done what you set out to do is a big accomplishment when it comes down to it. Like, man, I've really, really stayed true, consistent, and stayed the course. You know what I'm saying? And I think yeah. that's something that's 
that's commendable within itself, man. So, so thank you for keeping consistency there. Thank you for loving the culture. You know what I'm yeah, saying? For sure. And I think that's that's a huge, huge accomplishment, man. So, kudos to you for figuring it out. You know, um, are you really country? What I mean, you you got this country uh, hey. accent. You 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 know you. I mean, I know about Garth Brooks, and I know about. Uh, uh, what who had Brad Paisley? What's his name? Uh, any of them old boys? Uh, 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 Tim McGraw? You know, country boys. You know, and I know about uh, you know a lot of country boys I grew up yeah. with. But how country are you, Marcotic? Like, hey, I'm I'm like country rap country. But at the same time, I mean, have you I'm ever super... killed an animal to eat at night? Yeah, I, I went hunting and done what, stuff what, like what, that. What have you ever killed? You just been, may get you in trouble. Deer, you know? yeah, I've been deer hunting, rabbit hunting, squirrel hunting. Uh, what color are, are, have you ever went out at night to shoot a rabbit? Not not at nighttime. I have not. I have. Or something like that. You're talking them red I eyes? I went turkey hunting yeah. too, but yeah, I, I, was I, telling haven't, you. I haven't caught Red eyes. Turkey. You hear me? They got yeah. red eyes, my yeah. guy. Red eyes. That's what they did. They, they, they sit there, and if you shine a light on the eyes at night, they stand still. Yeah. And then they scream real loud too, like a human. <laughs> and, uh, see that they used to run around my trailer all the time growing up, so they just was all over the place. You talking about the deer? No, the the, the rabbits. The rabbits they're just everywhere. You know, deer is something else too. They got green eyes. See, people don't know this is real country stuff, man, and you have to watch them because they'll walk right in front of the damn car at night. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that ain't good. But I mean, yeah, hitting them, but. Yeah, I, I've I've went on a bonus bu a b bonus buck hunt in Lower Hill. Okay. Went to what they call Monkey Ridge, and like I've done some hunting. Yeah, but as far as like being the most like country, you know, I just I don't know. I'm just me. I'm from a place where, you know, I've been in the city. I've been in the country. I listen to rap music. You know, I like different genres of music. But uh, rap is your It's favorite. like a mix, man. I guess that's how it. I guess I'm a mix of. Who's your different, favorite? Different cultures, different places. You Who's know? your favorite artist? Rap artist. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Top three artists of all Any time. Any genre. Who would that be? Can a group count as one artist, or has it got to be a... Yes. Yes. I'd put 3-6 Mafia as my favorite uh, group. You know I could have guessed that. Group, could. Yeah. That's, that, that's it. 3-6 that Mafia. It. I put that. I'd probably say... Number two. Okay, that narrows down my how list. I'd have to think about this. But how did it I feel when you met Three Six Mafia? Uh, I haven't met them all at once, but I, like I've worked with different DJ ones. Paul. No, I, I haven't. I haven't worked with DJ Paul. I've worked with uh, Project Pat, Lil White, Crunchy Black. Uh, I've done a show with La Chat. Um, those those are the ones that's that, hard that I've done stuff with. I'd like to work with all of them, you know, but uh. Those, that's what I grew up listening to, man. So, and a lot of people do. You know, you'd be surprised, like out there at the mud parks, what you hear people running around. That's what they're not running around playing like stuff you was talking about. Brad Paisley. No, they're they're running around. Jason playing. Aldean. Yeah, they're, they're not running, listening to that. Running, I mean, there might be some, but they're running around playing like stuff like Three Six, like rap music, playing. You know, the the current country rappers like Jelly's huge right now. Jelly Roll, you hear Jelly Roll everywhere you go right now. That's big. You know, so he's everywhere. Uh, you hear people like Justin Time, Up Church, like you know, but they listen to regular rap too. That you might hear Lil Baby playing in the in the mud park. So you didn't get my next two, my last two on that top three artists of all time. Man, I'd have to. I'd say Eminem was one that I Eminem. grew up listening to, of course. I feel like that's a that's somebody that every white boy is gonna mention. No, <laughs> not really, not yeah. really. And I'm a hater. And then I'm uh, a, wait a minute, let me just stop you right there, because I'm gonna mention Machine Gun Kelly. I actually met him. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mention Machine Gun. Now is he like on an Eminem level? Probably not, but it, I met him. So yeah. what's up? You, yeah, no, and no. Yellow Wolf. I met Yellow Wolf too. Malone. Yeah, I like I like Yellow Wolf stuff Post too Malone. a lot. Where'd I you listen, come from? That's Post who Malone, everybody bro. compares me to. Who? A lot of the sound. They compare my sound to Yellow Wolf. That's my boy. I met him. Uh, I didn't meet him. too. They always say Yellow that. Yellow Wolf. They compare you to Yellow say. Wolf. The sound. You, the sound. What about what? And you say Lil Boosie too? Yeah, it's that high pitched Southern like. It's the high pitchness in my voice in the songs is what I think it is. Why they do that? What if if you give me one of your verses that you and you didn't get my you did, did you get my third one? You didn't get my third one yet. Rapper of all time or 
Not rap. It could Not be rapper. anybody. It could be any genre. Hell, it could be Johnny Cash. Hell, for all I care. Man, it's so hard to say. Um, of all time and current. Dead or alive. Oh, that's such a tough one, man. I think the top two. You got Let's one more. Three, six, Eminem. That's tough. That's a tough question, man. There's a lot. Give me one. Give me one. That I like Give me one. Oh. A lot of people go with Tupac and all them. No, nah, he do. He don't know nothing about Tupac. Oh yeah, I listen to him, of course, but that would be in, that's somebody. That's somebody that everybody would say. You know, as that's far right, as rap music, right. you got to right. give that. To all right, so you know. so you. But, uh, I listen. I listened to a lot of haystack growing up too. That's haystack? a small okay. southern place for me. I listened to a lot of that. Growing that's hard. Up, so. I, you said Eminem, and you know I always give Eminem hell on this show. Let me just say yeah. this. I think, and, and I want to break down my Eminem perception today for you guys who know y'all. If y'all know the show, y'all know I be on Eminem pretty bad because I feel like this culture thing, you know, it's, it run thick. You know what I'm saying? Meaning, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we brought rap into the game, brothers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just to hand it off and say he's the best of all time, I have issues with that. Let's be oh, real. Yeah, it's hard to. Let's be it's real. It's hard to say anybody. Yeah, but the best then, of all then time, I'm gonna say, say. But I'm gonna say know. the reason I'm so hard on Eminem. Yeah. Is because really, you know, when he first made that first album, and he was rocking out with Dre and all of them. Mm -hmm. It was something I could relate to a little bit because of the way the culture. He was intermixing with Snoop. He was intermixing with Jay Z. He was intermixing with these people, bro. He yeah. was he was collabing more than what he do today. Yeah. Now he don't do that no more. Let's that, that's my problem right there. I just figured it out. Right here with you here. Yeah. Is that he started off different than what he is today. He changed on me. <laughs> that bastard well, was good at cool. front. It'd be cool seeing work with a lot more Because he, he changed you know. on me. But he's 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 done a lot of songs, a lot yeah, of Yeah, but albums, early you know, on he was he was all he was definitely collabing more with the culture, with yeah. my people. But at the end he kinda just kinda, you know, but he was killing them verses. Maybe they got tired of rapping with him, and he, being a white guy, they didn't want to just see him just whoop him on no... No, they didn't want to do it. Because if you get on the rap with this boy, listen to me, you got to bring your A game. Yeah. Because he going to try That's to take true. you out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but I don't know why I went there. But at the end of the day, man, um, you... Okay. You got you to gotta feel me on this, man. Like, being, you said 3-6 Mafia, man. Juicy J and them, boy. Listen, yeah. I'm going to tell you something else. You might not agree with it. You might not even heard the song. You ever heard Sipping on Some Scissor? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't say that. Wait a minute. But I can't let me, let me just fan Let me just finish. Uh, just to be honest with you and be clear, I want you to understand me as I tell you this. Yeah. And I'm very serious about it, and I very much believe what I'm about to say. Pimp C ate all them niggas up on that whole song. Just to let you know, I'm a very big Pimp C man, fan. Rest in peace to Pimp C. R.I.P. to Pimp. Sure. I, I, if yeah. anybody That's watching this, they know song. already that I'm going to say that. My people yeah. know this already. Yeah. Whoever he coming. got on the track with, and since you said that was your best group, go back and listen to it. Watch what he do on that thing. Oh, yeah, no, I can say that. He's <laughs> a legend for sure. I'm a, you, so. you listen to Pimp C? Yeah, they show a lot of respect to him too. Bun. Yeah, everybody's listening. They love, to, they know? love Bun. So I'm too. the type of person too that I've tried to listen to all music. Like I think I've listened to some of everybody that like there might be an artist that I haven't discovered or something, but like it's like history to me. You know what you I mean? You love it. The, You're a student of the game. Yeah, it's like history to go back and listen to the old albums. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I think he'd say something about something about iodine pop poison on that thing. I'm listening to it. I can hear it. I got. That that boy he hey that boy hey that boy gonna, he gonna rock it every time, you hear me? Yeah. Some about some pimentazine was on there too. I can I'm hearing him. It's coming to my head right now. I always like Twister too. Oh, you in Chicago? You got to say that. Yeah, just because of the you know, I always was a fan of the double time rap thing. Yeah. A lot like the double time rap, the fast rap. When I first started, I I did fast rap a lot. I kind of I don't do it as much now. Like I'll. Not constant, anyway. Yeah. But, you know, I feel like a lot, when a lot of people first start rapping, they just want to rap as fast as they can or something. You know what I mean? There's you, a lot of people who do that. It's like you trying to figure out how where, where, where you can go with the art. Yeah. Right? How far can I push it? How mm -hmm. You might even rap slow just to see if you could do it. It's, it's an art, right? Yeah. 
Sure. And I really, I, like I said, you guys, man, are extraordinary. I never was a rapper, though. You know, I freestyle for the hell of it. Yeah. But I never was like a dude. I am a talker, okay? <laughs> I'm not a rapper. I am a guy who gets in the front of the camera or at, at, your, at your house. We go outside. There's a tree out there. And I just sit up right there and talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you got the podcast. Man. It worked out. It worked yeah. out, right? Yeah. So, so man, now you, you know, um, you over there by, you got Memphis down there too. Yeah. Memphis has some Memphis. heavy hitters down there, man. Like yeah, they got a big music scene, and yeah, I mean, there's been so many people to come out of, you know, at Memphis is self-explanatory. There's been so many big artists to come out of there. You know what I mean? So, and that's where Three Six was from. So. Who who are you who are you who would you like to work with that you haven't got a chance that to? I haven't got yeah. the chance to work with oh man that's a hard tough question to say but like I, I probably you know somebody like DJ Paul or Juicy J or um, you know of course like some of the big names that I've named um, and some of the, like the OGs in the game I've worked with a whole lot of the people that I feel like I've had like a checklist since I've came in and tried to work with everybody that I was a big fan of so wow you know it's just where would you like to perform at that you haven't performed at? perform man really I'd like to try to get on like some of the bigger festivals I've performed a lot of places and uh you know I've done the little shows the big shows I've thrown concerts um yeah, I'd like to get on on some of the big festivals too. Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of different ones of them, but just stuff like that. And man, I just enjoy doing it. So I like traveling and doing the shows. And uh, I've been doing the. Actually, I'm. I, well, here's a now time for me to announce it. But let's go. There's a. Uh, everybody needs to be at the Redneck Rave. That's what it's called. It's the Redneck Rave 2024 in May. It's in Blue Holler, Kentucky. They got a truck gone wild. They got trucks gone wild coming out there to be a part of it, which is the first time that it's ever happened. It's supposed to be one time only. You know, trucks gone wild is a real big event too. Um, it's thrown by just in time, and uh, you know, it's a it's a big mud park, and it's a it's a show that I've been doing, and uh, I've done for, uh, like quite a few times now, and it's helped me a lot in my career too. You know, doing that show and uh, which I know, you know. Larry had talked to you about me I was to get gonna, this yeah, interview, yeah, so for I got sure, man. We got, him we, got it, the, so. we got to talk about Larry Hoover Jr. Yep, there's even you know there's a, even a video of it where uh, I took Larry Hoover Jr. out on stage at the Redneck Rave. He came out to it. We got him to go mudding and stuff like that. Really? So, yeah. How did he like it? Oh, he loves it. He loves it out there. He loves it. Out man, there. we had him on this big. Uh, what's it called? It's like a giant monster truck, like stadium I forget what they call the things but it's like just a bucket that people ride on it's got rails around it yeah it's big truck tires on it and it goes up and down had him riding one of those all over the mud park through the woods and stuff so man it's fun so let's talk so about that for how did you how did you even link with Larry Hoover Jr. man uh so that's the first time I met him. Oh, man. he came was, down. Yeah, he came was, down for one of y'all events. He came to one of the events, and my manager. How did he hear about it? He just seen y'all online? Or? Yeah, he, he had had an artist that he brought to the event, and uh, my manager at that time is the one who had him come out there and come to the Redneck Rave. So wow. that's, how, that's just how I met him. That's uh, huge, man. Yeah. Like, like that's huge, man. And, and you know, just uh, just to link with the right people, man, is so important in today's times. You know, when you're dealing with the right people and you're moving with the right, you know, energy, man, ain't no telling where this thing can go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, man, um, how can people get a hold of you, man, if they're trying to reach out? Uh, man, just like I got an email, which is bookmarcotic at gmail.com, and I'm on Facebook, Instagram. If you type Marcotic in anywhere, you know what I mean? It'll show up. So, yeah, just any platform, man. So I'm on all those, and they, I'm pretty sure they can message just about all Okay, of them. and um, just this is the last question before we get out of here. Like, if you was not there to speak for yourself and somebody was doing a documentary on you and what you represented, Mm. What would you want them to say? 
what I would want them to say. Yeah, what would you, some key elements about you, Marcotic, that you would want to hear? I would just want them to, you know, say, which is what is true, is that, you know, if somebody is always doing good business, uh, that I try to outwork everybody. It's hard to match the amount of work that I do, and that's something that everybody says, so, you know, and uh, that, and I'm a family guy, you know what I mean, and just that I never gave up at it, you know what I mean, and I kept doing it. But, uh, yeah, one thing, before we go, I do want to tell them, too, the album that I just put out, I got it to chart number four on iTunes. Come on now. It's uh, it's called Hungover on Mud and Whiskey. It's a 25-song <laughs> album. 25? And, uh, yeah, man, it's got, I got uh, Project Pat. I got Coat Ford on it. Um, there's a long list of, man, there's so many different people that's on that album, but... uh. Yeah, I got to start number four, man. Number four, so, Project yeah. Pat, man. Let's talk about him because I didn't try to get this sucker on my show, man. Yeah. Yeah, but he came to Dallas one time and I didn't get to meet him. He could, is he in Chicago today? Uh, I don't, don't You don't think that. so? Uh, okay, let's talk about he's him. around Memphis. Let's talk about say. him for a minute. Like, how did you get to link with this guy? Because I'm uh, trying to get a hold of him. Man, I've, uh, I've just been working so long and met so many different people. Actually, somebody that it did security forum at the time introduced me to them and they just called and put me on the phone with them one day so and it went from there and then i did a song with him and met him and uh so that's that's how it happened wow well, how was he like when you guys was doing the song and what's the name of the song again uh the song the song's called kept it g the song so it's a little it's a little different it's uh basically i took like a three six mafia style beat yeah and i added guitars to it and i added like electric guitars and solos and everything. Wow. The beats made by Sano. Um, Y'all'd have to go listen to it. You'd have to How check did, it out. Give the me your verse. Did what did your verse do on there? What did you say? Hold on, let me remember. So what is the verse, man, on that song that you and Project Pat? You guys, a hell of a song. I don't even know if that's you for real. Give me the verse. Ah, uh, all right, I got you. It goes, uh. Got some young ones in the trailer park, still selling drugs. On some little white doubt me now shit. What up, thug? I said rap don't work out, trap out my trailer, don't give a fuck. Yeah, song cracker, see you, I fuck you up in the club. Yeah, mobile honk, rich bitch. Throw it up, huh? Ain't nobody really want to fuck with us. Turn it into like a kid. Fuck. fuck. Man, oh, that man, you had that old going. Oh, hell no, boy, that was it. Man, yeah. like, like you wrote, you wrote, do you write or you punch in or what do you do? Uh, I write sometimes and punch in, record a lot. Whatever like you, just, how you feeling? A lot of it I don't write and I just say like two bars or just freestyle punch in. Man, yeah. thank you so much, man. Yeah, you don't even know what a blessing you've been to me, man. I enjoy the music. I enjoy meeting new people and I enjoy the culture, the way you shocking it with your move with this country rap, man. It's going down. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, man. Love you, brother. Hey, man. Yep. Hey, Big I appreciate love. appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for having man. me. Man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out. Man.